this morning the inauguration of His Excellency Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton CVO QC JP as the Governor General of St. Kitts and the Nevis. be seated. Dr. The, Hon the Honorable Timothy Harris, Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. Honorable Vance Amory, Premier of Nevis. Other members of the Federal Cabinet and Spouses other members of the Nevis Island Administration and Spouses. Her Ladyship, Honorable Justice Marlene Carter and Mr. Carter. Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps. Members of the Clergy and Spouses. Representatives of the Media. Invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen all. It is a distinct honor and pleasure for me to welcome you today to this ceremony to mark the appointment of His Excellency S.W. Tapley Seaton, CVO, QC, JP, as Governor General of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. I now invite Reverend Hilton Joseph to come and do the invocation. Let us all stand. As we honor the presence of the Most High God, permit me to share from the Moravian text for the readings for today, the 10th day of September 2015. The Old Testament text says, I, the Lord, do not change. Malachi 3 and verse 6. The accompanying hymn verse penned by William Walson in 1867 says, O word of God incarnate, O wisdom from on high, O truth unchanged, unchanging, O light of our dark sky, we praise thee for the radiance that from the hallowed page a lantern to our footsteps shines on from age to age the new testament or the doctrinal text declares i am the alpha and the omega says the lord god who is and who was and who is to come the almighty revelation chapter 1 and verse 8 him writer says hail alpha and omega hail o author of our faith the finisher of all our hopes the truth, the life, the path. As we continue in prayer, O oh great I am, we declare that you are our sovereign king. We declare that there is none to be compared to you. When we view creation, 
we see the touch of your infinite majesty at work. When we interact with fellow human beings, hear their ideas and thoughts for the good and well-being of nations, we can only conclude that indeed you are the God of wisdom. When we recognize that you, loving God, know every detail of the human being and that all creation surrenders to your command, we can only express the sentiments of sacred scripture, O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. These expressions of you and about you drive our whole being to declare that we are not worthy and we humbly ask for your forgiveness. Creating us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. As we rise with thanksgiving upon our lips, we ask that you will pour out your divine anointing upon these proceedings and especially upon our Governor General, Mr. Tapley W. Seaton, that he may imitate your will so that his tenure will be successful. Through his good office, may the lives of the people of this federation and beyond be empowered and set to do great exploits for you. Bless their God, his entire family, and those who draw from his wisdom. God bless this nation and may it always be surrendered to the authority and will of the most high God, El Elyon, in his name. In Jesus' name we pray and this August gathering says, Amen. Our scripture reading comes to us from the book of Psalms and in particular Psalm 136 reading verses 1 through to 8. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretcheth out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endure it forever please further exp we express our commendations to his excellency on the achievement of this high office from the Moravian church eastern west indies province by our chairman the reverend dr courtroy jarvis their governor general I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Chief Elder. The Moravian Church, Eastern West Indies Province, offers its congratulations to you on being appointed as Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis. We are thankful that God has seen it fit to allow those with the authority to do so to choose you as a fit and proper person to ascend to the high office in this country we firmly believe that this is no accident and as a church we wish you all God's blessings and pray that you will use your good office to unite the people of this country you are governor general for the entire country we implore you therefore to serve the people well the Bible encourages us to pray for our leaders and rest assured that as a church, the Moravian Church East and West Indies Province, and in particular the Moravian Church St. Kitts Conference, and further the Zion Moravian Church, we will be praying for you that God will grant you great success in all your undertakings. God bless you and continue to walk good. Kind regards from the Reverend Dr. Courtroy Jarvis, 
chairman of the Moravian Church, Eastern West Indies Province. Mrs. Margaret Foreman will now read the commendation from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Elizabeth Regina. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of St. Christopher and Nevis, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, to our trusty and well-beloved Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seton, Commander of the Royal Victorian Order, one of Her Majesty's Council, Justice of the Peace. Greeting. By this our commission, given under our sign, manual, and signet, we do appoint you, the said Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seton, to be our Governor General of and over our realm of St. Christopher and Nevis, during our pleasure and with all the powers, rights, privileges, and advantage to the said office belonging or appertaining. Two, and further, we do hereby appoint that this our commission shall take effect as of the first day of September, 2015. Three, and we do hereby command all and singular, our officers and loving subjects in St. Christopher and Nevis, and all others whom it may concern, to take due notice hereof, and to give them ready obedience accordingly. Given at our court of St. James, this 14th day of August, 2015, in the year of our Lord, 2015, and in the 64th year of our reign. By Her Majesty's command, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Sylvester Harris, Prime Minister. I again invite you to stand as we have now come to the administering of the oath. Oath of Allegiance. I, Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton, CVO QCJP, do swear that I will faithfully bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. Oath of Office. I, Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton, CVO QCJP, do swear that I will honor, uphold, and preserve the Constitution of St. Christopher and Nevis and the law, that I will conscientiously, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties as Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis, and do right to all manner of people without fear or favor affection or ill will. So help me God. just witnessed the taking of the oaths administered by Her Ladyship, the Honorable Please Justice Marlene Carter, to His Excellency Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton, appointing him as the Governor of the I Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. In this a very public ceremony.
Vermeer's, who will make a few remarks. We will now have remarks from the Prime Minister, Dr. the Honourable Timothy Harris, Prime Minister of St. and Nevis. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, Your Excellency, our Governor General, Her Ladyship, I beg leave to adopt the protocol that was established with a few amendments to recognize at the ceremony the presence of Dr. the Right Honorable Kennedy Simmons, our first Prime Minister, Sir Probin Innes, the former Governor, Sir Dwight Venner of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Board, and of course, distinguished representatives of the bar, the business and NGO community of which Your Excellency has been an illustrious member. On Wednesday, September 2nd, 2015, Mr. Samuel Wimmer Tapley Seaton, QC CVO, took the oaths of office and allegiance following his official appointment as Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. That private ceremony secured for His Excellency a privileged place in our nation's history as the fourth Governor General of our, Feder of our Federation since independence was attained on the 19th of September, 1983. The Federal Cabinet, and indeed I should say the entire national community, enjoins all in congratulating the Governor General on this remarkable accomplishment, which in our collective opinion could not have been conferred on a more deserving son of the soil. When one examines the life of our newly installed Governor General, one realizes that his latest accomplishment forms part of a long record of distinguished national service and recognition that has characterized his life. Some might even contend that His Excellency's appointment as our Governor General is the crowning glory in the life of an individual whom many have defined as patriotic, selfless, learned yet humble, and a foremost legal scholar in St. Kitts and Nevis, and we may add the wider Caribbean region. What is certainly not in, in dispute is the fact that His Excellency has had a rather illustrious career in the legal profession, commencing in 1975 with his appointment as a Crown Counsel. His upward mobility in the civil service was punctuated by his appointments as acting High Court Registrar and Additional Magistrate over the period 1975 to 1980, Attorney General of St. Christopher and Nevis from 1980 to 1995, and Queen's Council from 1988. Since the meeting public office in 1995, our Governor General has been, until May 2015, partner and co-owner in the law firm of Seaton and Foreman, to which he has also continued to serve the people of St. Kitts and Nevis via pro bono legislative drafting, including, but not limited to, the following. The Small Business Development Act, number 24 of 2009, the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College Act, and the National Trust Act. From his private practice, he also served as a member of the drafting team of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, which crafted the Securities Act of 2000, the Securities Regulation, and the Aliens Land Holding Amending Legislation for the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union Member States. 
our newly appointed Governor General is at heart a statesman, a business development advocate, a heritage conservationist, and a keen promoter of education as a poverty reduction strategy. History will eventually record that it was his vision and his keen sense of corporate responsibility as chairman of Cable and Wireless that is today responsible for the company's consistent sponsorship of the annual Academic Excellence Recognition Awards program over the last 26 years. This program remains the only federal academic program that recognizes outstanding CXC performance of deserving students and their teachers. Based on my knowledge of our Governor General, I can assure that the genuine humility of the man was not, has not permitted him to be comfortable. I am sure as I proceed the high points of his career or life of service to the good people of St. Christopher and Nevis. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, this is one such occasion when an accounting of his national service is quite fitting and most apt. To be precise, as we ponder the state of our country at this time, when some of our misguided young people continue to engage in antisocial behavior and criminal activity, it would be wise for us to recognize and emulate persons such as our Governor General, who are paragons of statesmanship, and yet quiet, effective leadership prevails. I am fully convinced that so many of our young people need exemplary role models, such as His Excellency, an individual whose life has consistently been about rendering yeoman service at every occasion to this country he loves and he calls home. As I review His Excellency's upbringing from Market Street, Boston, and his adult life, it appears that every step along his journey has been a gradual progression towards this very moment in time when he assumes the highest office in the land as the official representative of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. At this time in our history, when we could be facing a dirt of solid leaders at the family and community levels, our country cries out for leadership that can be trusted, leadership that is genuine, leadership that is consistent, and leadership that can be modeled by our young people in word and importantly in action. Such is the leadership that can be expected from our newly appointed Governor General, His Excellency Tablisitan QC. It is this same type of leadership which our Team Unity Government has promised the people of this country. And it is the kind of leadership which we are committed to consistently demonstrate in public and in private, in season and out of season, because our people deserve nothing less. Our citizens deserve selfless respectful, decent, and honest, honest leadership which can stand up to scrutiny at any moment and at the same time raise the bar of our individual and collective potential for God-given greatness. Our team unity government is convinced, and indeed I was fully convinced that our Governor General, His Excellency Tapli Seaton QC, brings to this new posting the best of intentions, the highest ideals, and the history of national service and statesmanship that his high office demands. Our government has every confidence in his ability to lead, to counsel, and to execute the decisions of our head of state, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We wish our Governor General 
every success in this new and noble assignment and we commit our government's full cooperation and partnership to his office in genuine service to the wonderful people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Your Excellency, on behalf of all the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis, I take pride in congratulating you on this, your latest accomplishment, and to wish that your tenure in office will be one remembered for the excellence of service. I expect that you will, in your own way, ennoble the office of the Governor General. May it please you, sir. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for those detailed and congratulatory words to our new Governor General. I now invite His Excellency, Mr. S. W. Tapley Seaton, to make his response. Deputy Governor General for Nevis, His Honor, Mr. Eustace John, CMG, Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Ministers, Your Ladyship, the Honorable Justice Marlene Carter, Resident Judge, and Mr. Carter, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Reverend Hilton Joseph, Cabinet Secretary, Mrs. Josephine Huggins, ladies and gentlemen, it is perhaps significant that I captioned my response as give thanks and Reverend Joseph seemed to have recognized that this would be my message. It is right to give thanks unto the Lord from this biblical admonition to us all to the universally accepted principle of giving thanks. I adopt this mantra as I stand here today as your Governor General. I thank Almighty God for bringing me to this new level of national service. This morning, I wish to express my appreciation to Her Ladyship, the Honorable Justice Marlene Carter, Resident Judge, for administering the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. To Reverend Hilton Joseph for the invocation, scriptural reading, and commendation. I am indeed grateful for his message to all of us, which is timely and to be heeded. I thank the Honorable Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers for the confidence which they readily reposed in me from the time of my deputizing in this office to my acting appointment to my appointment as Governor General. And I thank the Honorable Prime Minister for the very kind expression of support and of detailing, as the Cabinet Secretary indicating, my career to date. I'm certainly grateful for those words, Mr. Prime Minister. I owe a great debt of gratitude to my parents, William and Paul Seaton, who imbued me with a desire to render national service. Their example at all levels, be it political on a regional basis in the West Indies Federation, on the part of our dad, to our mother's daily dedication and devotion to service to the public, their lives served as outstanding examples of service without fanfare or acclaim. This was a visual and real mani manifestation of life for my sister and myself. I will always refer to my primary school education as providing the bedrock for my lifelong quest for knowledge and learning. My undiminished gratitude to my teachers foremost among whom are Mrs. Veronica Phillip, MBE, and Mrs. Maureen Edwards of the Epworth Junior School. And I noted Mrs. Edwards' presence here this morning, and I'm certainly very happy to see her. A journey which started exactly 60 years ago this year, 
when at age five I became a member of that school. Two of the secondary school teachers at the St. Kitts Nevis Grammar School who in, were three who impacted my life are Dr. Eustace Esdell, Mrs. Viola Jacobs, and Mrs. Patricia Hobson. I've seen Mrs. Hobson here. <laughs> By their early interaction, their knowledge of the subject which they taught at grammar school ensured the cementation of a learning process on my part. My professional career, which marks its 40th year this year, and I place on record my appreciation to the Right Excellent Sir Robert Bradshaw, who was Premier, and to Dr. The Right Honorable Sir Kennedy Simmons, who is present with us, who as Premier and Prime Minister afforded me the opportunity to serve in the public service as Crown Council, Cabinet as Attorney General, a career from 1975 to 1995, and thereafter, of course, in private practice. I also wish to record my fullest appreciation for the ready guidance of my senior sister, Greta, Marguerite Toussaint, whose pursuit of excellence in all endeavors is a continuing example to me and to many others. And to our aunts and uncles who saw family as important and who rallied at all times in ensuring a haven of love and security. Today, as my appointment as Governor General is formally recognized, I thank all of my fellow citizens for the overwhelming acceptance of my appointment. I am truly humbled by their support. I pledge to undertake, to continue to undertake my duties with a renewed commitment to service and to do right to all. My sincerest appreciation to all those persons who played a role in organizing this morning's event and transforming it into a tropical paradise. And to all of my fellow citizens, I welcome your interventions as I seek to discharge the responsibilities of this high office. Thank you very much. And there you heard the response to the remarks of the Prime Minister. First, you heard the Prime Minister, the Honorable Timothy Harris, and then the response by the Governor General, S.W. Tapley Seaton, CVO, QC, JP, in which he thanked all those persons who were instrumental in helping him to be where he is today, the Governor General. Your seats for a few moments longer as the Honor Guard is being prepared. As soon as they arrive, I would request that you go to the driveway to witness the Honor Guard salute the Governor General. Now we are at Government House witnessing, of course, the ceremony to mark the appointment of His Excellency S.W. Tapley Seaton, CVO, QC, JP, as the Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. And we just heard the Cabinet Secretary, the Chair of the Ceremony, announces that the guard of honor is on its way. We can hear the drums coming down the, the driveway to the front of uh, Government House at this time. I'm sure that you can hear the drums in the background. It's, it, it's a, quite a nice setting here in the grill with the sun beating down on the grounds here. The grass is really green at this time and how the place is decorated it gives you that sort of um, feeling, you know. It, it's a tropical garden yeah, scene here at, at Government House. Um, three tents, one large tent with the assembled guests and a tent uh, projecting from the front veranda of Government House, uh, elevated a, a bit where the official party sat and now we've seen the departure of the Governor General to the front of the home 
to the front of the home to inspect the guard of honor. Guard of honor! Order! The guests are proceeding to the walkway so that they can be a part of this as well. And uh, let me shift my venue as well so that we too can bring you a description of exactly what's happening here on the grounds of government headquarters. Well, we are about to witness the Yard of Honor on our television screens at this time. We are seeing the members of the St. Louis Street, the Twins Force, and the to the front of the government house. Should he will receive and the salute and the St. Kitts Defense Force as usual. Very smart and dressed in the green. And of course, uh, they always be one of the highlights of ceremonies such as these inauguration ceremonies and installation ceremonies. Right now, we are seeing the invited guests and the cabinet members, of course. They are now moving outside in front of government headquarters. They are watching our television grill. Quite an amazing ceremony this time. Yes, Vera. And one thing you have to say about the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, when it comes to ceremonies like these, um, well, in general, they are a sharp outfit. And ceremonies like these, they really go above and beyond. And a group of young men and women here in the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force, um, outstanding looking individuals. We see the assembled guests now making their way to the walkway um, to witness the inspection of the honor guard by His Excellency, the Governor General, Sir Tap Tapley Seaton. Invited guest, of course, the first Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Sir Kennedy Simmons, the Governor as well, Mr. Corbin Ennis, he's also here to witness this ceremony. Remarkable ceremony. The ceremony to mark the appointment of His Excellency S. W. Tapley Seaton as Governor General of St. Kitts and the The Guard Commander is now addressing His Excellency Tapley Seaton. He has invited him to inspect the Guard of Honor and Governor General accompanied by his aide and Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Wallace, the commander of the St. Kitts Defense Force.
Thank you for inspecting the garden of your excellency. Guard of honor! Remove Pages! Keep cheers for Governor General Tapley Seaton. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Get up and out! Replace Pages! Governor General, His Excellency S.W. Tapley Seaton. Members of the defense force the right. and providing Quick, music for the members of the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force. Quite an accomplished band, I must say, been around for quite a while under the, the leadership of Captain Williams. in the Guard of Honor having an official program for the Guard of Honor where the General to be so Samuel Weymer and Captain Seaton. We're bringing you live coverage from the grounds of Government House in Springfield, where we had this morning a public oak of office ceremony for His Excellency, Sir, Sa His Excellency Samuel Weymer and Captain Seaton. Uh, appreciative guests witnessed a sharp defense force on a guard contingency, contingent and a band. <laughs> Yes, you 
you know, they come in to begin the session. And the um, ceremony here at the government house, well, just uh, they really be coming to do this because they just joined us as to what actually is here today as we are about to wrap up our coverage. This morning we saw a ceremony for the oath of office for his Excellency Samuel Weymouth Tapley Seaton, appointing him publicly as the Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. On the 2nd of September, uh, His Excellency Tapley Seaton was administered the oath by a resident judge, Her Ladyship the Honorable Marlene, Justice Marlene Carter. This morning, in this public ceremony, we had, that was chaired by Cabinet Secretary, Josephine Huggins, we had the national anthem being played by the St. Kitts Davis Defense Force Band, followed by the invocation and scripture reading by the Reverend Hilton Joseph of the Moravian Church. Uh, the reading of the commission from Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II was read by the sister of His Excellency the Governor General, Mrs. Marguerite Foreman. The administration of the oaths publicly was done by Her Ladyship, the Honorable Justice Marlene Carter. We had remarks by Prime Minister, Dr. The, the Honorable Timothy Harris, in which the Prime Minister highlighted uh, the commitment and this, the commi commitment and demonstrated public service of His Excellency Tapley Seaton. In his response, His Excellency took the opportunity to commend those who were instrumental in shaping his life thus far he highlighted some of his teachers from the Epworth Junior School, some of his teachers from the Bastia High and the Bastia Grammar School, as well as other individuals in the public service. In particular, Premier Robert Bradshaw and the First Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Sir Kennedy Simmons, for, their, for the opportunity to have served in the civil service both as a Crown Counsel and later ending his career as Attorney General. Upon completion of all the remarks, His Excellency inspected the Guard of Honor from the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force. A sharp group of soldiers came down and for his first inspection of the troops, um, I am sure that he was impressed. A short demonstration was done by the band and then we had the march off. The guests have been requested to return to their seats and join in refreshments by His Excellency Tapley Seaton. There, this has been a fitting ceremony this morning. It had all of the pomp and pageantry that one would expect for something like this. The atmosphere here at the grounds of the government house has been festive. And as usual, the grounds are that of a wonderful tropical garden and the grasses have benefited from the recent rains. So it is lush and beautiful here this morning. At this time, I'm going to have a word with our Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris. Give us a brief explanation as to what happened here and how are you feeling at this time to know that one of our son of our sons has been elevated to such a position in St. Kitts and Nevis. Well, it is indeed a, a pleasure, a distinct pleasure and an honor to be a part of this ceremony and as it were, the confirmation of Mr. Tapley Seaton, QC CBO, JP, as the fourth Governor General of St. Kitts and Nevis. I had the honor both to propose his nomination for consideration to act as the Governor General at the leave of absence of the former Governor General, and then to propose his appointment formally as the Governor General. That had come after seeing him in the office for about three months. I then wrote to the Her Majesty and asked that he, she consider the confirmation, a confirmation which she was pleased to grant. And from the 1st of September 2015, Tapley His Excellency Tapley Seaton, has become the fourth Governor General of St. Christopher and Nevis based on a nomination I preferred to Her Majesty. Therefore, for me who have been in the middle of it, 
I feel the sense of pride that we were able to choose a son of the soil that has widespread national appeal. Everyone who knows him has come to respect him, his integrity, his humility, and his willingness me, to serve. And, you can and as I attempted to enumerate it, to enumerate some of the areas in which he has given yeoman service, you would appreciate the breadth of his um, leadership and service to St. Kitts and Nevis. I feel that the cabinet has done an excellent job in choosing a son of the soil. And one has, from all the outpourings of support, has received the acclaim of residents and national alike far and near. Would you say, since you've been elected as the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, that this is one of your proudest moments? I would certainly say that. And it has been one of the choice about which I am most sincerely pleased. From day one, I knew in my heart of heart that Tapley season was a man I would prefer to have as a Governor General. And to have been able to do that and to have succeeded in receiving the approval of Her Majesty bring to an end something that I knew. I had observed Tapley and had occasions to interact with him and every time I was always impressed by his accessibility, his willingness to render objective and supportive advice. And so I felt that the country was deserving a man of his standing and as I, as it were, canvassed other opinions, this was the one who produced the greatest consensus. And as we wrap up this brief interview, I know it's going to be a busy day for you, Mr. Prime Minister. Could you give us just a little insight as to what you'll be speaking about this afternoon at your press conference? Well, today we continue what has become monthly press conferences of the Prime Minister, and we intend to address a number of issues. Independence is upon us. We intend to speak about that, to speak about our program. We have an important manifesto commitment being realized on the 18th of this month. That is the paying out of $16 million to former sugar workers who had been aggrieved since 2005. This is a major accomplishment for us because we are doing this at no cost to the National Treasury, which is significant. And so we will speak, give an update in relation to that particular matter. There may be other areas of concern and we wait to hear and to see what the members of the media may deem to be important. So that is really what is in store and accounting and update. We have had a significant meeting in terms of the Petrocarib summit which takes place this year in Jamaica. We have had the occasion to reconnect with Venezuela and the long-standing interaction between the leadership of Venezuela and the people of the English-speaking Caribbean, starting as it were with Simon Bolivar, mm -hmm. who is a national hero, and who, through the letter of Jamaica, penned some 200 years ago, expressed a vision of unity in the Americas. And that unity is still what we are attempting to live and promote in St. Kitts and Nevis. That unity is perhaps a powerful reminder of what independence should be, bringing the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis together to celebrate a significant achievement and a significant capacity for their own empowerment. And as we look to future independence celebrations, we do the retrospection and we do the forward looking as how we are going to continue on the path of progress. Okay, I just want to thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, and happy independence. Thank you very much. And they had it. We just spoke with the Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, and of course we're going to be wrapping up things here at a, a government house. Of course, Grell gave you a synopsis of what took place. We'd just like to thank all those persons who were involved in putting this production together. Our 
senior production officer Marlon Bristol and the rest of his crew, our engineer Keith Lake, and of course all who had anything to do with the ceremony here this morning. Gwell Brown, of course, want to thank you as well for joining us for the, the coverage of this very important ceremony. It's always a pleasure to be a part of a ZIZ production. You know, I, I'm still family. Um, all the time, all, all the, the time. time. You're welcome. All the, all the time. And um, I just want to say that it was really enjoyable being a part of the team again. And it's now back to Master Control.